when somebody says to me, I got to stop this habit, I've got to break this habit. The first question I ask him is, what are the benefits you're getting out of doing it? Many times on my blog, I get people asking me questions about, um, you know, I've got this habit that I can't seem to break. And no matter what I do, I keep doing it. And I, I'm trying to get it to change and to get it to last. And I start and I, for a short period of time, it seems to work. And then it, I go back to my habit again. So I'd like to address about how to break habits and get a lasting change. But I'm going to hit it from an angle that you may not have thought about. So if you have something to write with and write on, that would be great. Every decision you make is based on what you believe consciously or unconsciously is going to give you the greatest advantage over disadvantage. Now, when I first say that, many people say, well, I don't choose to do this action. And um, I'm trying to stop it. And I, and I confront them and say, no, consciously or unconsciously, you are perceiving that there's more advantage than disadvantage in doing that behavior or you wouldn't be doing it. No one's going to keep doing a behavior unless they get some advantage out of it. Now, I had, I think I may have shared in, in another little video, um, about a woman who was eating and eating and eating and eating and couldn't stop eating. And she was trying to break the habit of eating because she was gaining weight and being obese. But when I asked her what's the benefit she was getting out of it, she found out that everybody in her family was large. And if she wasn't large, she didn't feel like she's part of the family. So even though she was consciously saying, I got to stop, I got this habit, I got to get rid of it. And I got it to finally stop happening. She unconsciously and that we made it conscious by asking the question, what was the benefit she was getting out of it? She had an unconscious benefit to fit into her family. Then I asked her, what's another benefit she gained from doing this habit that she thought she wanted to change? Well, she found out that her big sister was pushing her around and, you know, bigger than her. And so she made a commitment that she would always be bigger than her sister. So she was eating to make sure she was always bigger than her sister. Then she found out when we asked her what was another benefit why she was keeping this eating pattern going. She found out that she, when she tried to go on a weight reduction program and fasted literally and went 45 pounds down on this radical diet, <clears throat> when she lost a bunch of weight, a guy hit on her, you know, showed affection to her. She was new to the relationship dynamic, did not have anybody in her life prior, and all of a sudden, felt that this man loved her and she loved him and the first time out and ended up making love and getting pregnant. And then the guy disappeared the next day. He was a one night stand and she all of a sudden, seven weeks later, found out she had a baby and now she's sitting in a, a Catholic upbringing now with a baby on the way, uh, deciding do I have an abortion or do I not? The paradox. And anyway, this was one of the most traumatic experiences of her life. And she thought, wow, when I lost weight, I, un, I, I, I had this most traumatic experience. So she was saying to me, she's got to break this habit. She's got to stop eating. But in, on the unconscious level, the unconscious motives were different. The unconscious motives was I don't ever want to go and lose weight again because that last time I did, I ended up having the most traumatic experience in my life. If I lose weight, I won't be part of my family. If I lose weight, I'll be pushed around. So when somebody says I need to stop a habit, the first thing I do is ask them, so you wouldn't be doing it if you weren't getting some advantage out of it. So let's find the unconscious motives. Let's find an alternative way of getting those motives met that are viable and that are, that are via, you know, they will do the same outcome without having to do that behavior, the original behavior. And let's stack up those new behaviors and new viable alternatives to what their values are so they increase the probability of doing it. And then we'll decrease the links between the original action and their highest values and decrease the probability of doing it. So these are associations, neuroplastic associations made in the brain to be able to change the habit. And then once they have an alternative, viable alternative way of getting the same benefits that they're getting currently by doing the habit they think they want to bake, 
and having a viable alternative and have it linked to the brain, the brain now takes that pathway because it's more viable than the one before. We've stacked up new associations and benefits of doing it and drawbacks of doing the other one. There's a conditioned reflex, and if we stack up pains or pleasures with something, we can decline it or increase it in our behavior. And this is basic Skinner's conditioned reflexes that, that have been around and Pavlov's conditioned reflexes. So when somebody says to me, I got to stop this habit, I've got to break this habit, the first question I ask them is, what are the benefits you're getting out of doing it? And they'll usually say, I'm not. That's why I want to stop it. It's, it's, look, it's causing these problems. And I go, I know, I know, I hear that. But your actions speak louder than your words. Your words say you want to break the habit, but your actions are showing me that you're still getting more advantage and disadvantage out of it. You wouldn't be doing it. No one's going to do it some action that's not going to give them advantage. Even the individual who's doing drugs and taking opium, they wouldn't be doing it if there wasn't in their mind an assumption that there's more advantage and disadvantage out of doing it. And finding out what the advantages are, bringing the unconscious motives conscious, is one of the first steps in making a person aware that they're actually in control of this. They have the capacity to change it by the, the associations they make in the brain. Every time you make new associations in the brain and stack up new pleasures or pains or advantages or disadvantages to a behavior, you can modify the behavior. And this has been changed. That's why if you, you know, you, you ring a bell <laughs> while you're giving some sort of food and you're salivating, the ring of the bell can make you salivate. An old Pavlovian response. <clears throat> I've been doing changing behaviors with people for, gosh, years, decades now. And uh, it's not really that difficult once you find out what the unconscious motives are. Because as long as they don't, they'll tell you what they don't want to do. I, I had people that say, well, I need to work out. I need to change the behavior. I'm just sitting around and I'm not working out. But inside their head, there's other things in their life that are giving them way more advantage that they keep doing than working out in their mind. So even though they intellectually say, I want to go work out, and they've injected a value of somebody that they've looked up to and admired and go, oh, I want to do that. That doesn't mean anything into the brain as long as the brain still has associations that have more drawbacks and benefits to the behavior you say you want to do and more advantages and disadvantages of the thing you say you don't want to do. So the first question I ask is, what's the benefit you're getting out of it? And what's the motive you get? And people don't want to hear that. They want to, they want to get rid of it. <laughs> and I first thing is I make them aware that they are consciously or unconsciously taking actions that are actually getting them something they want. And unless they find an alternative way of getting those same actions, they're likely to continue. And if they want a lasting change, the advantages of the new behavior has to be stronger than the behavior, the advantages of the behavior that you're saying you want to change. Because as long as it's got more advantage and disadvantage, you're not going to change it. Now, <clears throat> we also have noticed, I've noticed people that go and overeat and overdrink maybe on a weekend, and they've noticed that on Friday night and Saturday night, they kind of blow it. They're out of control. Well, that's because they don't have anything going on on the weekend. But on Sunday night, they don't blow it because they've got Monday to go to, to go to work. If you fill your day with very high priority, very meaningful, very inspiring things, you'd be surprised how disciplined and organized you are. You know, when a woman's about to get married and, and they, the wedding is in two weeks um, and she wants to get into that nice wedding dress, she will Near, you know, starve herself almost to get the weight down, work out, do whatever it is to make sure her body looks her the best. She'll get in shape, but the night of the wedding, whoa, once she's not got that objective of getting in that dress, that night she'll overeat, she'll overdrink, she'll party, she'll do whatever because she doesn't have that next inspiring, meaningful thing to get up and go and be disciplined for. If you're not filling your day with high priority things that are very meaningful, your life will fill up with low priority distractions that don't. If you're not filling your day with high priority things that inspire you, that challenge you, that are you know you want to tackle something meaningful, then you're going to go into your amygdala, and your amygdala is going to want to avoid a pain and seek a pleasure, and it's going to keep going to things that are conscious or unconsciously pleasurable. And so I don't go by what people say. I go by what their actions are. Their actions speak louder than their words. And when they say, I need to stop this behavior, I go, well, great. As long as you have more advantage and disadvantage, consciously or unconsciously in doing it, you're not going to. <laughs> 
So we're going to have to find out what those unconscious motives are, find out the benefits of those, then find alternative ways of getting those benefits, stack up the advantages of doing that alternative until the advantages of that outweigh the advantages of the current behavior, and then stack up the drawbacks of the current behavior that you're wanting to change, um, and stack up the drawbacks until that gets pain associated with it and the other gets pleasure associated with it, and then your brain will move in the new direction. It'll stack up new associations, go in the new direction, and epigenetically alter the nerves and alter the pathways, the synaptic pathways in the brain. So if you go through and stack up enough advantages of the viable alternative, one that you believe will give you an advantage, a new advantage, one that you would like to have, the new habit, if you will, great, stack it up. If you've got a big enough reason for doing it, you will. When the why is big enough, the hows take care of themselves. But if you don't have a big enough reason for doing it, you probably won't. So first identify what the unconscious motives are, find out what the advantages are and they're unconscious and it's not just one. You know, the lady had 75, we found 75 unconscious motives for her to keep weight on. It was amazing what she discovered. She also noticed it kept her skin smoother and people acknowledged her skin. It made her, she think, she believed, it wasn't what, was no proof of it, that her, her hair was thicker and shinier when she ate and kept her weight on. I mean, these are things she had in her brain. So as long as she had those advantages there outweighing the drawbacks, she was going to continue to eat. But we gave her viable alternatives and shifted her eating patterns. But just know that when you say you want to stop something and break a habit and you want to do something that's lasting, whatever that alternative is, it has to have more advantages and disadvantages. And the, the old bro broken habit that you want to break has to have more disadvantages and advantages or you'll keep going back to the pathway. So you find out what the conscious benefits are, you find out viable alternatives, you find and link those benefits to the viable alternatives and the drawbacks to the original behaviors and your brain starts moving in the direction of this. I've been doing this for decades and um, it's, it works if you work it, but most people want to fight it. They want to they want to blame, well, I want to, yeah, there's no benefits to this thing. It's a bad behavior. I need to get rid of it. I know that's the moral ideas that you picked up from some outer authority. I see this people that are thinking I need to do exercise more I need to eat differently or whatever they're comparing themselves to somebody else that they admire <clears throat> they have a different set of values maybe health conscious values and then they're expecting themselves to live in somebody else's values instead of their own they're not aware of what their own values and their own associations in their brain are and then they go around and go and I need to stop this behavior and and they're beating themselves up because they think they're doing something that's wrong or unwise instead of uncovering what the unconscious motives are and shifting it and realizing it. They have the power the whole time. They don't have a weakness. There's not some flaw in their system. They are just having associations in the brain, creating the behaviors that they have. And you have the power to transform those associations. And that's one of the things that I teach in the Breakthrough Experience program, my signature program, which I've been doing for 35 years almost. That program is showing people how to identify what those unconscious modes are, how to balance out the perceptions, how to stack up new associations, how to take command of your association to brain so you can increase the probability of doing the actions that you are prioritizing in your life or to honor it. Either go and do what you really, that you, the stack up new associations so you can do the new behaviors or honor the ones you have. And sometimes in the breakthrough experience, I have people that think they want to break it until we find out the unconscious benefits of it. And then they realize, no, I really don't want to break it. I thought I did because I was comparing myself to other people and, com and having a contrast between me and them and then judging myself for it instead of honoring that, hey, I found a strategy that's actually working. Some strategies don't need to be fixed. They need to be appreciated and they're useful. And they're helping you get a lot done. <clears throat> I had a woman one time that said, I've gained all this weight. I don't know what I'm doing here. We found out the motives for it and found out that she almost, when she was very thin, she was going to the gym and she was getting all, you know, looking hot and the guys were hitting on her and she was flirting with them and she almost had an affair. And the moment she almost had an affair, she started to go, hmm, that's dangerous to go to that gym. So she stopped going to the gym, stopped working out, putting on a little bit of weight, made herself a little frumpy to not undermine her relationship. 
So even though she said, I need to lose weight now and I need to do this and I need to change my behavior, she had an unconscious motive to keep the weight on to make sure she didn't have a flirtation and distraction and undermine her family. So don't underestimate unconscious motives and make them conscious by asking how specifically is what I'm doing, what's the benefit to me, and bring those on the, from the unconscious to the conscious. Then come up with viable alternatives, then make the links on the benefits of the viable alternatives and the drawbacks to the original behavior and you can change it. I show people how to do that in the breakthrough experience. That's why I want people to come to break. There's so many advantages of learning the method, the Demartini method, how to use values, how to stack new associations in the brain so you can make sure that you can transform perception, decisions, and actions in life and take command of your life. So I wanted to show you how to break habits and if you want to and um, make a lasting change. And you will do something as long as there's more advantage and disadvantage, you'll keep doing it. Very traits that you think you're going to break have been a habit because there have been more associations of advantage over disadvantage without you even knowing it. So I look forward to seeing you at the Breakthrough Experience. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next week. And just know that you have the power within. The, you have way more power inside you than you may have given yourself credit. So don't compare yourself to other people. Compare your daily actions to your own highest values and come to the Breakthrough Experience so I can show you how to master your life. Look forward to seeing you next week.